The legitimacy of international law is being tested. The Goldstone Report, one of the most controversial documents sanctioned by the United Nations, is finally endorsed by the UN Human Rights Council amid unprecedented Israeli denials, objections and concerns. Does the report pose a threat to Israel? And is it an opportunity for the Palestinians to take back the initiative? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the programme. I'm Sahil Rahman. Israel has rejected a UN decision to back the Goldstone report into the war on Gaza. The country's leadership has called it a one-sided and unjust resolution. In a statement, Israel's foreign ministry said, the adoption of this resolution by the UNHRC impairs both the effort to protect human rights in accordance with international law and the effort to promote peace in the Middle East. This resolution provides encouragement for terrorist organizations worldwide. The report Israel is so angry about is the result of a fact-finding mission by Judge Richard Goldstone. It was commissioned by the UN into possible war crimes committed during the conflict in January. The UN Human Rights Council voted to support Judge Goldstone's findings, but it was not a unilateral decision. There are 47 members on the council. Out of those, 25 voted in favour, including several Arab and African states. Six voted against, including the United States. 11 countries abstained and five didn't vote at all, including the United Kingdom and France. The report says that Israel used disproportionate force during the war on Gaza and that its soldiers deliberately targeted civilians. It accuses Israel of using Palestinians as human shields. But it also accuses Palestinian armed groups, including Hamas, of deliberately targeting civilians in southern Israel. It wants both sides to conduct credible investigations into their conduct within six months. It suggests, if they don't do this, that the report's recommendations are referred to the International Criminal Court in The Hague. So why is the Goldstone report causing such a stir? Besides its detailed classifications of the Gaza war violations, the final chapter of the 575-page report deals with the committee's recommendations to UN institutions. These are the General Assembly, Security Council and International Criminal Court. It also has instructions for Israel, the Palestinian armed groups and the Palestinian official leadership, or as the report calls them, the responsible Palestinian authorities. What makes this report different from previous ones is that it's an operational report. It has follow-up mechanisms, deadlines and alternative options in case of unforeseen obstacles. In theory, it cannot simply be stored in a filing cabinet and forgotten about. Well, joining me today on the programme in Jerusalem, Alon Leal, former director of the Israeli Foreign Ministry. In Liverpool, Abdel Bari Atwan, editor-in-chief of the pan-Arab newspaper al Quds al-Arabi. And in Paris, Iyal Sivan, an Israeli filmmaker and commentator. Gentlemen, welcome to Inside Story. Uh, Abdul Bariatwan, can I begin with you, sir, in Liverpool? Nobody wants to see, I think, this report uh, collect dust in a cabinet, but no one can predict the future either. Um, will it have the effect it's supposed to have, or do you think it will be scuppered somewhere down the line? Well, actually, it should have the effect which is uh, expected. Um, you know, people in the Arab world, in the Middle East, all over the world, are extremely happy that for the first time the Israeli are on the hook. You know, for the first time, people can see the suffering of the Palestinian people under the Israeli occupation, the Israeli bombardment. So, uh, I think this one should be pushed toward international court of justice or uh, the tribute uh, or, or, or the court of criminal criminal courts in, in, in La Hague. It is it's extremely important. Mm -hmm. uh, the Palestinians lost 1,400 people in Gaza. Until this moment, 60,000 are homeless because of the Israeli bombardment. So for the first time, we can see the Israeli actually uh, judged as a war criminals all over the world. And by whom? By a Jewish lawyer, a Jewish judge who, uh, you know, who is a Zionist, who believes in Israel's right to exist. So I think these kind of crimes shouldn't go unpunished. For the first time, we would like to see the Israeli behind the dock, behind the bars, like exactly uh, the uh, Slobodan Milosevic of Yugoslavia, mm -hmm. where all the war criminals which were actually charged and, and uh, punished for their crimes. Okay, well, let's get reaction from Jerusalem. Alon Leal, um, obviously the Palestinians 
pleased that this um, has been adopted, but the reaction from Israel has been very different, hasn't it? Yes, the feeling uh, among the vast majority of Israelis is that the report is not balanced. Uh, um, the accusations against the Hamas in the report are hardly mentioned, and uh, they are as severe as those that are uh, in the report against uh, Israel. So uh, I think uh, if at least we have uh, it being checked in international organizations, mm -hmm that it will be checked in a balanced way, that the accusations against the Hamas will be checked too. Uh, Mr. E.L. Sivan in Paris, uh, as a Jewish man looking from the outside inwards uh, and also how the world has reacted uh, to the adoption of this report, what's your position on this? Well, first of all, I think that uh, the fact that the visa international renowned uh, lawyer, men of justice that decides not to treat Israel anymore as a state of exception, as something which is behind the law, above the law. Uh, this is a very good news. The problem is that if we go deeply into the report, we find that, that there is a main issue, which is what are the rights of people under occupation to defend themselves. Of course, everybody is speaking, and the Israeli official spokesman will speak about the fact that uh, uh, the visa danger because democratic states cannot defend themselves anymore. It means they cannot act legally in a terror uh, means. But at the same time, what are, after the Goldstone report, the rights of population under occupation to defend themselves? And I want immediately to react about, if you allowed me, to react about the question of this is a non-balanced report. What is, what is balanced in Israeli words is pro-Israelism, this is balanced. What it means it's not balanced? Of course it's not balanced. It's not balanced because Hamas do not have tank. It's not balanced because Hamas do not have uh, airplanes without pilot. It's not balanced because the situation on the ground is an unbalanced uh, situation. But as an Israeli, a citizen of Israel and a Jew, I think that maybe uh, we will understand one day that Goldstone gave us the best um, gift that you can give to somebody that you love and you feel with solidarity with, which is to criticize him mm -hmm. when he behaves wrongly. Okay, well, obviously the debate, even beyond Inside Story, is going to be whether, about whether this report is balanced or not, and, and that will continue. But let's look at some of the other issues as well. And let's go back to Abdul Bari uh, and about the Palestinians and whether the Palestinian Authority missed an opportunity when this... Um, report came up for a vote the first time round and the fallout of the postponement of that report. How damaging has it really been for the Palestinian Authority? Oh yes, uh, it was a huge damage uh, inflicted on the Palestinian Authority. Uh, they were under tremendous pressure from the United States, from Israel. The United States uh, warned uh, Abbas, the leader of the Palestinian Authority, that he will be insignificant, he will be cornered like Arafat. Uh, also, the Israelis said to him, look, if you endorsed or encourage the endorsement of such report, you may end without a peace process. So the man listened to this American and the Israeli pressure. And he missed the first op opportunity when he encouraged his representative on uh, the Human Rights Council to postpone or to delay the, the voting. So it was, the, it was a setback. So one of the one sorry. of the reasons for the uh, postponement given by the Palestinian Authority was that it would encourage uh, unification amongst the Palestinian groups, and yet the Palestinian factions are not talking to each other. Yeah, it, it was it was actually uh, you know uh, an error from the Palestinian National Authority. I believe they learned their lessons because there was uproar in the Arab world among the Palestinians, uh, a huge anger among them, and a lot of criticism. For so the Palestinian Authority, for the first time, actually submitted to the uh, pressure of the Palestinian public opinion, to the Arab public opinion, and actually they changed their mind and they asked for emergency session for the Human Rights Council and. 
we discovered that uh, all the uh, excuses to postpone the vote were rubbish, to be honest. Uh, we discovered that China supported the uh, resolutions or the, uh, the reports. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, also, uh, Russia supported it. Britain and France, the closest ally of Israel, did not bother to vote in order to avoid any embarrassment from the Israeli side. It was a strong message to the Palestinian people that the international community wouldn't let them down. It was a strong message to the yeah, Israeli the Palestinians that, themselves, my the Palestinian Paris Palestinian leadership themselves shot, them in, shot themselves in the foot, didn't they, really? To cut a long story short, that's exactly, what they did. Yes. Yes, exactly. They shot themselves in the foot, and they, they, they cannot ignore the Palestinian people, the Palestinian public opinion anymore. Well, they and they have to listen to the people, not actually to the American and to the Israelis. And okay. the, when they uh, decided to change their mind, the outcome was marvelous. Mm. OK, well, let's go back to uh, Mr. Leal in uh, Jerusalem. And of course, now there is a timetable in place. Uh, the clock is ticking, as so many commentators have said. And as a consequence, Israel now has to self-investigate itself. Um, does non-compliance with a report, do you think, worry the Israeli government at the moment? The, the, the soundings we're getting from Jerusalem and Tel Aviv certainly are that the Israeli leadership may not even um, wish to uh, participate or, or wish to uh, consider offering a report within six months. I hope very much that uh, Israel will decide uh, to issue a report. And if it has uh, answers, uh, the world has to hear about it. So I really hope uh, that the government uh, will work on it uh, seriously and issue a counter report. I think what is important at this stage is if the United States will uh, veto the decision uh, or not. Uh, there is a big question mark uh, about uh, the American behavior. Uh, the Obama administration has a different attitude uh, to Israel, to the settlements, uh, to the Palestinian issue than the Bush administration had. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there will be no uh, American veto, it will be a major blow to Israel. And if there will be a veto, it can stop this snowball from uh, rolling. Well, of course, uh, whether it does or not, we will see. But, of course, uh, joining me now on the phone uh, from Dublin in Ireland is retired Colonel Desmond Travers. Uh, Mr Travers was asked by the UN Human Rights Commissioner to participate in the writing of the Goldstone Report by offering a senior military opinion on the strategic military objectives of some of the events that took place during the December and January assault of earlier this year. Uh, welcome to Al Jazeera, sir, and thank you for your time. Um, we know what the report is now recommending, that both the Palestinians and the Israelis submit a self-investigation report within six months. If either side fails to comply with your report, will you be pushing for further action uh, at the hands of the International Criminal Court? I think that, in fact, is uh, referred to in the body of the report, and uh, the series of alternative options are discussed in detail in it. And the answer, therefore, to your question is yes. Now, what's your reaction, or what was your reaction to the adoption uh, of your report by the UNHRC, considering it had been initially postponed, or the vote had been postponed, and then it was uh, revived again and voted upon last week? I think that's uh, encouraging. Um, I think the adoption or non-adoption is, in fact, uh, a very severe test of the moral community's ability to address a major issue such as this report and its recommendations. I think it's also, in addition to some of the comments your other speakers have made, it will be somewhat of a litmus test of the new United States administration with respect to the question of immunities. And do you think that from what you're hearing both from Israeli uh, voices coming out of Israel and Palestinian voices coming out of not only uh, the occupied territories but the rest of the world, that both sides will be able to self-investigate themselves and offer uh, the UN credible reports in six months' time? Well, um, again, I have to be uh, optimistic. Um, Israel, for example, is a democracy with a well-established judicial system uh, and a competency and an ability to investigate events. Um, I am uncertain about the same level of competency within 
a, a, a relatively new uh, organization in Gaza, such a political, new political organization, but we, we would have to be hopeful that they would have at least a similar willingness to investigate themselves. Uh, but uh, whether, whatever the outcome uh, uh, would, would be with respect to both uh, belligerents, mm-hmm. uh, there is a very definite timeline involved, and that's, uh, I think, a very important condition within the recommendations of the report. Well, we shall see what happens. Uh, retired Colonel Desmond Travis, thank you very much for your time from Dublin. Uh, let me go over to uh, Ial Sivan in Paris. Um, from what you're hearing there, obviously, uh, Mr. Travers uh, has set out the stall uh, of the uh, uh, investigations as such, or what they expect as part of a co-author of that report. The Israeli Prime Minister has said that he's not going to allow any of his troops or politicians to be allowed to be prosecuted if it comes to that particular position. Are we heading for a showdown, do you think, between Israel, the UN, or Israel and the international community? Let's hope so. Let's hope so as an Israeli, as I said in the very beginning, that we are not anymore in a state of exception where international law do not apply to Israel. But if we think about the self-investigation, I can understand that the report is kind of a formal uh, demand, demands the self-investigation. But the self-investigation in our case, and when I say in our case, I mean in this region, uh, in region Palestine, Israel, it's kind of a ridiculous situation. I mean, if we take who will self-investigate Gaza, the government which was democratically elected, which is the Hamas one, which is boycotted by the world, will be self-investigation, or the Palestinian Authority, which showed already, which is in fact a uh, non-democratic government or authority, which is supported by the world and doesn't have any any access to Gaza. And in the case of Israel, a self-investigation will be what? Do we have in the history of Israel self-investigations, commissions, commissions that were done not because of international demand, because of internal demand. Do we have any case of employment of those suggestions? It wasn't the case with the Vinograd Commission. It's not the case with the Cannes Commission concerning, for example, Sabra and Shatila and the War of Lebanon. There was a specific, a specific and precise uh, demand that the person of Ariel Shannon can do- not be any more pri- uh, anymore mini- Ministry of mm-hmm. Defense, and he became Prime Minister. I mean, we take the Orr Commission about the massacre of 13 years Israeli citizens happen to be Arabs, of course. What what was said? Nothing. No one was persecuted, or nobody. There was no justice done out of the self commission. The self commission to give a self commission to Israel is once again to say you are behind law, and being behind law, above the law, or outside the law, it's exactly the same. I hope that for once we will understand as Israeli citizens, and I'm representing, of course, all in myself, but the Israeli soldier, before acting, obeying to orders, he will understand that he cannot go to shop anymore in London, make shopping, or to go to a British university if he behaves as he behaves in mm-hmm. Gaza Strip. OK, Mr. Alon Liel, uh, can I ask you to respond to that? Yes. Um, first of all, we heard just now from uh, Eyal in uh, Paris that uh, previous legal procedures didn't uh, enhance peace in the region. Uh, you must uh, understand, everybody must understand, that uh, uh, the Israeli army is not uh, something that is uh, uh, disconnected uh, to the rest of the society. Uh, every young uh, Israeli, Jewish Israeli, well, when, when serves comes, in the army. When it comes of bombing uh, civilians, and, uh, or at least then the discourse is different. Of them. Yeah, let me please. And uh, there is no such thing that uh, an officer uh, will not be able to go to Britain and the uh, Israeli society will be happy about it because the, the Israeli society is, uh, generally speaking, behind the army. This is the army. It's not an army of professionals but if the army is that found, get but the if salary. The army, the of the army, of the country, society. But if members the, of the army are found guilty, country, if members of the army are found guilty in, uh, in, in okay. the findings within uh, the self-investigation, uh, uh, then there are going to be problems, aren't there, for not only uh, how the army is perceived within the uh, okay, Israeli population, okay. but also by the international community. We already have a few tens of uh, colonels and generals that do not leave the country. We already have it. But the country and the army 
uh, are basically the same. If you just exclude the Arab part of the uh, um, society, the army and the Jewish part of the Israeli population are the same. So just to believe that you will have more officers that cannot go to do shopping in London and Paris will enhance the peace process uh, is very naive, is very naive. Okay. Well, I yeah. agree, I agree though, I agree though, that the Goldstone report is posing a huge problem for uh, Israel's international status. I agree, but the main thing is that it will trigger the peace process. It will relaunch the peace process. If it what? will push Israel into the corner and the peace process will be dead for another decade, we okay. achieve nothing. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ashwin Barry, uh, you've been listening to what our uh, Israeli guests have been saying. The, the yes. peace, program, the peace mm. process doesn't exist according to uh, Mr. Leal to a certain extent. But then in, in the same breath, we've got Zippy Livni now lobbying um, some European governments to make sure that they get immunity should they happen to be in, in that country at that moment in time and be in of war crimes. I think they shouldn't have any immunity. They should be indicted. That Sibi Livni was responsible. She was she was the foreign minister, uh, and also Ehud Elmert and Ehud Barak, the defense minister. They were behind the, the generals. They supported the generals who committed the war crimes, the war against humanity in Gaza, mm -hmm. who used the phosphoric bombs against innocent people. And talking about the peace process, where is the peace process? The, the, you know, in the West Bank, for example, uh, there is no. Any, any attacks uh, launched against the Israeli. It is very peace and very quiet. So why the Israeli did not commit themselves to the roadmaps? I remember Shimon Peres, the Israeli um, uh, president, used to say to the Palestinians, look, we need two weeks without funerals in order to implement the roadmaps. Where now he has three years of peace in the West Bank. So why the Israeli never committed themselves to the peace process? It was the, completely the opposite. They are building settlements there, mm -hmm. and they are actually undermining the houses uh, and the, the status of Jerusalem. The, uh, the, the, the Al-Aqsa sure. Mosque is, is all the time besieged. And also, you well, know, these, the, the many people, houses were demolished. It seems so that these issues, where is the, it seems we that these issues are, this peace process. It seems that these issues will be addressed, certainly, in, in the, in the self-investigating investigating reports. E.L. Shivan, can I come to you back in Paris? Uh, is there a different mindset now yes. from those Jewish people or Israelis that are living abroad as to how they're sort of looking at what's going on in Israel? and how Israel is being perceived by the outside world and how Israelis are behaving there. First of all, I would like to come to a main argument that was said by Mr. Lial before, which is the fact that there is no difference between army and, and the population in Israel. Well, this is very strange. When it arranged the authorities, there is no difference between army and civilians. But when it comes to blame Palestinian resistance, so suddenly civilians are attacked. If there is no difference between civilians and the army, so when civilians are attacked, the army is attacked too, which is not my, my position. I think that there is a big difference. And there is here an attempt of criminalization of all the Israelis. It's not because some committed war crimes that it transformed all the Israeli into war criminals, and surely not all the Jews. Now about the question if abroad there is a different conscience. Very the quickly, we're, we're running out of time, Mr. Israelis. So. Yes, of course, it's not among Israelis. I think that the big problem that we are facing is, is the difference between intention and acts. Mr. Obama, President Obama, got a Nobel Prize for intention. Mm -hmm. In fact, while the vote in the Human Rights Commission, we saw that in terms of act, nothing changed. And this is true also for Israeli government. The right. peace process is the idea within Israel that we can continue to build the settlements, we will continue to repress okay. Palestinians. And if the idea is to stop settlements and to stop repressing Palestinians, within this process, so let's stop this peace process, which allowed okay. more crimes than ever. Well, unfortunately, we do have to leave it there. Uh, Mr. Uh, Sylvain there in Paris, uh, Alain Liel also in Jerusalem, and Atwin Barry, uh, Abdel Barry Atwin there in Liverpool. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us on this edition of Inside Story. Do appreciate your thank time, you. and thank you for joining us on the programme as well. We do welcome your comments and suggestions. Please do email them to us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. I'm Zahil Rahman. Thanks for your time. Take care.